So can we take these two questions, on that table over there and on this table? Uh, we may not have time to do more, but uh, David Norris. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, David Norris. <clears throat> I'm concerned because you've had an excellent presentation, uh, but it raises the question of 16. We're not allowed to vote on that. So our vote is controlled. And I'm concerned about the whole question of control and control of the agenda at this convention because I think it's not democratic. And I think if we have an issue raised where it's very clear that uh, 16 is a significant consideration, then the fact that what we're presented with is just a question of 17, yes or no, I think we should have a facility to change that and to look at the question of 16. And in the same way, we have the presidency, but we don't have uh, anything except the very edges of it. It's like being told you can buy a house, but you buy it here, you buy it with four bedrooms, and you can choose the carpet in the living room. And um, there are a number of issues that concern me like that. On the questionnaire, we're asked to vote on whether Shannon Aaron should be abolished or reformed. But as I know, it, it, it nowhere appears on for the discussion by this group, and I think mm. it should. Otherwise, mm. we're avoiding the most important mm. uh, uh, constitutional change that confronts mm. us, and I think that reduces the significance and impact of this okay. convention. So can, my can real question is about the voting. Can we vote on 16? Yeah, okay. yeah I, I did indicate in the, very, in the earlier session that we may have a ballot paper which will give an opportunity to, uh, to, to uh, vote on matters other than this specific issue of going to 17. David, would you just... Uh, uh, I don't yeah. know if the microphone is, is working. It is, yeah. I just, um, y yeah, our, the, our job as a group, um, early next, t tomorrow morning, will be to come up with what would seem to be a fair draft ballot paper that reflects the discussion that we're going to hear today. So if, for argument's sake, one of the, one of the topics that's discussed is why not votes at 16 rather than votes at 17, that will appear on a ballot paper. And then there'll be an opportunity for the members to, to express their views on the ballot paper on all the options that they will have discussed. Okay. Th no, um, that's not, I'm afraid that's not, we are, we are not, um, by, by the uh, vote of the Houses of the Oireachtas, that's not within the purview of this co convention. Yeah. Um, thanks, Chair. I, I just wanted Good to... Name, please, and yeah, stand up. Sorry, uh, Joanna Tuffy. Um, I just wanted to clarify when we're voting tomorrow, what will we be voting on? Is it only the voting age in relation to general elections, or will it be in relation to the voting for other elections? And for example, yes. I know that for EU elections, we can't change the voting age. That has to be done at mm. European Union level. So it's just if, if yeah. we could have clarity, what will we be voting Again, on Again, the answer is precisely as David Farrell has given it, that the voting paper you will receive tomorrow will reflect the conversation in your groups today. And that, so that, that, that is, I think, the same answer. Yeah, this table, table six, please. Hi, Jerry Farrell. Um, this is the question just for my own information. Um, have we any statistics on our current voting patterns from 1821, for example? Uh, do we know, is there big turnouts from that age group? Um, OK, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm going to take actually the two more questions and then we'll, we'll answer and then, then we'll close this Q&A. Uh, it's a question for Name, Theresa, sorry, uh, Stephen Agnew. Um, it, it, just in your, your research, Theresa, um, did you look at any sort of scientific evidence in terms of brain development? I mean, is there any evidence that, that a 16-year-old is significantly less well-developed in terms of capacity than, than an 18-year-old or a 17-year-old? And is there one final question? From anyone? If not, uh, Theresa, can you answer those last two questions? Perfect. Uh, I'll, I'll take the, the last one first. And, and uh, the balance of medical, um, and I think it's neurological opinion, is that actually your brain is fully matured at 14. Um, so it's really the discussion about 16, 17, 18 is really about um, you know, your, your development as a person, your personality, and it's really about social and cultural, uh, social and cultural factors. And there's actually a lovely quote from the uh, Youth Citizenship Commission report from the UK that says we should think about maturity as a process and not an event. Uh, and uh, so your, your brain is fully formed at 14, and then we engage in a process of development, um, uh, development thereafter. 
Um, the other question related to, to turnout levels. We are concerned about youth turnout and especially in the last 20 years. So there is evidence for Ireland and also uh, international evidence to say uh, that uh, youth turnout is becoming a concern and the number of uh, younger people in the uh, 18 to 24 age cohort um, engaging in voting has been in decline. But I should frame that in the broader context that there is a, a lot of international evidence that says we need to think about the broader ways that young people participate in the political process and in particular that they may engage in other forms of political participation like signing uh, boycotts or attending protests and that one of the changes that has happened over the last uh, number of decades is that young people don't really see voting as a uh, an obligation in the way that they have done in the past and there's a lot of work by, particularly by an academic named Russell Dalton but also by Pippa Norris uh, along this particular uh, this particular trend so voting has been going down among younger people but it's also the case that other forms of political participation may indeed be taking their place. So it should not be inferred that young people um, are unwilling to, to participate. It may just be that they're doing it in different, uh, in different ways. And there's just one other point I would add, and that is that we can actually, it's, it's entirely up to yourselves how you frame uh, the discussion. And the voting age can be reduced for all elections. That can be local elections, European elections, uh, presidential elections. And, and in Austria, when they did reduce the voting age to 16, uh, the principle of equality applied uh, and the the voting age was uh, reduced for, for general elections, but it actually applied to all uh, all elections. Um, in other countries, uh, what they have done is they have trialled reducing the voting age at local elections. So, for example, in Germany, in a number of areas in Switzerland, and most recently in Norway, uh, they have looked at reducing the voting age um, at local elections to 16, uh, with a view to looking at how that has worked and perhaps making changes uh, subsequently. And indeed, in Austria, they actually reduced the voting age to 16 at local elections in 2000 and they came back then in 2007 uh, 8 and they actually reduced the uh, the voting age as a consequence of that trial and broadened it out to to all elections so there's quite a, a range of, of items that you can think about and that you can discuss and give us feedback on uh, on all of those uh, all of those options so you can set the discussion yourselves